On this episode of Paint Society, we're going to solve the question of choosing the right grit to paint your car. You'll receive expert advice from professionals in the field on choosing the correct and appropriate sandpaper when it comes to the application that you are working on. From sanding to buffing, this is the complete guide to get you on your way to beautiful finishes. What's going on everyone and welcome back to another episode of Paint Society, the channel where the learning doesn't stop when the video ends. Today we have the video that is really going to help you when choosing the right sandpaper grit for your project. With all these options, how do we know which one to pick? It can be quite confusing. But not to fear, Eagle Abrasives came through and they sent the whole P-line and their unique K-line. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna discuss the difference between the P and the K-line, and then we're gonna use both when we head over to the shop. We're gonna learn a little bit about plastic uh, refinishing, about sanding some Bondo, a little bit about metal, and even buffing too. And after this video, you're gonna have a clear foundation of what grits to start with. So our P grit is our most common sandpaper, and it's what we see all the time and in the stores when we go to purchase our sandpaper. Now it is from Europe, and the P grit comes from FIPA, which is the Federation of European Producers of Abrasives. So that is what we're going to use today along with the K-Grit. Now let's show you what we have for the P-Grit first. In our P-Grit, we have Tri-Pro by Eagle Abrasives. Now Tri-Pro is the most commonly used sandpaper brand within Eagle that is for mostly the do-it-yourselfers and even our body shops. And when we turn it over, we'll see that our higher grits here are Kovacs, which is the same company. Kovacs is a company that originates in Japan, but in America, it's called Ego Abrasives. Now with all these grits, sometimes it's confusing. Which one do we start with? Do we have to use every single one? Now when we head to the shop, what you'll see is we usually use each grit in intervals of 100. So sometimes we have these grits that might be 120 and then 180. So we'll go ahead and we'll clear that up and we'll give you a starting baseline of what to use. Now let's go ahead and check out and see what else we have. So now here is the good stuff. This is the K-Grit system. And let's talk about what the K-Grit system is. Now the K-Grit is a unique proprietary system to Eagle Abrasives. And what it does is it cuts with a finer scratch with the cutting speed of a lower grit. For instance, if we have a 600 grit, it will cut to an equivalent of, let's say, a P320 grit with leaving that 600 grit scratch. So you can see the paint savings, which is why we say maybe a body shop would be better for the K system because we can have a more effective production with our finer grit scratches, leaving a finer finish whereas the P-Grit might be just a little bit better for the average do-it-yourselfer. The K-Grit also claims to have flexible stones and stones that are sharp on all sides so that it will cut better and smoother. Now, I almost forgot to mention that when using a sandpaper, going back to the basics, the lower the number, the coarser it is, the higher the number, the finer it is. See, all that sandpaper really is is a bunch of little abrasives or stones put onto a piece of sandpaper. We're pretty much scratching the surface with the different coarseness of those stones. And that's what we have here. Now let's check out a couple other cool gadgets that we have to go along with the K system. Now when identifying the K system, we'll have a chart here, which is a reference guide, will tell you the equivalents. So for instance, right here, a Sky 600 in the K will cut like a 320. A K 800 will cut like a 600, but still lead that 800 grit scratch that we would see in the P system. Moving further along, we have our backing pad, which is a little bit flexible. We'll be putting this on our 332nd stroke DA, and we'll use it for the K system. Then we have a wide variety of interface pads to be used with the different grits, ranging from regular, which is a little bit firm, to soft. These are very important when providing a cushion for our sandpaper. 
Now I've already cheated and used these toll cut blocks and these are really amazing. I do get runs from time to time and these will knock off the surface of the run. Within this little box, what you'll find is all the little toll cut papers and they're arranged in different grids. And you'll find the grids right here, they're labeled on the back. So let's say for instance, you wanna use a 2000. All you'll do is peel it off and then you'll stick it right on. And there you go. You're only gonna be cutting the dirt nib or the paint run. And let me tell you, these work pretty good. Now, last but not least, we have our sanding block with the K-grit sanding papers just cut differently. Inside, we'll find our interface pad. Now, these are great to keep in your pocket when you're painting and attach a piece of sandpaper to. What these are good for is sanding base coat. Let's say you got a dirt nib or something like that. This will softly and easily take it out to make sure that you don't scratch anything other than just where you want to. And again, we have all the grits necessary to do the job that we want. Now, I can already hear your brain start to fry. But not to worry, we're gonna take all this information here and break it down and show you how to use the right grit on the right application. Also testing out that K grit and seeing how it works out. Let's go head over to the shop and let's start on our projects. So we're back here at the shop and now we're gonna go through a few applications between plastic, prep, metal, and a little bit of wet sanding. Let's go ahead and get started. For this step in the process, we're gonna start with our P180 to smooth out everything that we can. So right here, we use the Polyflex filler and we're gonna use our 180 to knock that down. Now we wanna soften up that scratch and get it ready for primer. For this, we're gonna use a P220 grit. Then we're gonna hook up the interface pad to kinda of go around those contours and soften up the scratch even more. With the 220 grit, I'm making sure I'm going over the 180 scratches only. We'll go ahead and take it one step further with 320 grit. This is going to ensure a smoother finish. A smoother finish means smoother primer and smoother sanding and smoother paint. And for those hard to reach areas, we have a maroon scuff pad, the equivalent of 400. Make sure we're using maroon if primer is going to fall on it or if it's a solid color. For a high metallic color when blending, we're going to use a gray pad. So here's the bumper before getting primed. And this is what the bumper looks like all primed. From this point, we'll show you how to prepare your primer for paint. We'll use any black for kind of a guide coat to show us where we have already sanded. We'll start off with 400 grit in our interface pad. Not too aggressive, it'll cut the primer down and then we'll go from there. Here it is after 400. Now if you're gonna seal, you can stop right there. Let's say you're not gonna seal, then you can move on to a 600 grit. But remember to use your guide coat first so we can see that we're removing all the 400 grit scratches. Now once it's all ready for paint, it will look something like this. Keep in mind, you have to do the same thing on the whole rest of the bumper. So at this point, I'm ready to paint. Since I'm sealing, I would have stopped at 400, but you can take it a step further if you're not gonna seal 600. Now let's say you have a very high metallic paint job and you're scared about those metallics landing in those sand scratches. You can take it a step further and you can use a P800. This will further refine the scratch, but you will lose a little bit of adhesion between the base and the primer. So that's totally up to you, which is why I recommend sealing. For me, I'll go ahead and sand the rest of this bumper and I'll get it into paint. This is in sealer and you can see how it's in a nice uniform finish and we can lay our base coat right on this nice and beautifully. And here it is after base coat, a nice beautiful metallic orientation. And here's the bumper after a clear coat. This job is done and ready to go back onto the car. 
Okay, so in this application, we're gonna just sand some uh, Bondo. We're gonna use the 80 grit. You can wrap that around your block. I use 80 grit just to knock it down. Then I'll take my 180 and I can extend the sanding a little bit more. I don't want my 80 grit to gra uh, scratch into this area. That's why I'm moving on all the way to 180. And then we have a Kovax dry guide coat. I like this because you can really get into all of the little crevices. We want to make sure we're moving totally those 80 grit scratches, you know, before we move on. Then once more, we'll put it on our 180 and get ready to back sand it with about 320. Now we'll go over the whole area with 320 on our interface pad. And this panel is ready for primer now. Now, when you want to keep the repairs small, we have a small sander to do so and the right sandpaper. For this, we can use a three inch palm DA sander. This one is from Cornwell Tools. Now we'll use a P grid just to feather out that repair. And we also have a three inch interface pad. I'll start off with 80 grit and I'll go ahead and smooth out the surface and get it nice and flat. I'll then transition into my 180 and feather it out about another inch or so. Then we'll take our 320 with our interface pad and we'll back sand the area. At this point, the technician can choose whichever method he chooses to fill this hole. You can either use epoxy or you can use plastic welding, but he can be assured that the surrounding area is sanded and any fillers or epoxy will land in a sanded grit instead of a smooth surface. This is ready to be repaired now. Okay, so we just saw some applications using the P-grit. Now with that bumper when we started off, we started with 180 to level the surface, we had a lot of rock debris and chips. Now, let's say that was a rear bumper. We wouldn't use 180, we would just scuff the surface around any of the damage. So maybe like a P400 to P600, depending on the condition of the actual bumper. Now we saw on that bumper, we moved to a P220 after a P180. We usually wouldn't jump in that small increment, but it is plastic, so we do refine a little bit more so that that plastic doesn't get chewed up. So that's very important when you're working with a uh, plastic substrate. Now we also saw some different applications using the P-grit, and we're gonna be moving on to the K-grit now. Now it's very important that you learn with the K-grit that the K-grit is going to be a little bit different. Now the K-grit might benefit you in a body shop. Remember that the pricing might be different, but is it worth it for you to get a cheaper sandpaper and go through the whole box just to sand down a hood or a few panels, okay? That's something as a shop owner, you might need to take into consideration. Now with the K-grit, just to remind you all the way that it works is that it has the cutting speed of a lower grit. So for instance, let's take that K800. It's going to cut like a P600, that same speed, okay? But it's gonna leave a, a P800 um, finish or even finer. So that's the way the grit works. It is essentially taking out those steps in between and it makes the job a lot quicker. So let's go ahead and let's get started with that K grit. Okay, so this is our next application and we're gonna be using the K series for this with the uh, block. Now the cool thing about the K series is uh, we're gonna be sanding this primer right here and we can start with actually a 600 because it will cut similar to a 320 in the uh, P grit. 
And what this does is it really helps um, with less refinement of the scratch. So for instance, in the P grit, we'd have to start with maybe 320 or 400 and then 600. With the 600, claiming we can do everything in one uh, step. And these do come apart just like this. But right, we're gonna go ahead and we'll uh, sand it down and uh, we'll get this thing in the paint soon. I'm gonna take it towards the top of the fender where we might have some of that overspray, get that overspray off. Nice and smooth. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna scuff the rest of the surface. I got a 330 seconds uh, DA sander, so a little bit smoother cut. And then I have that softer interface pad here. We're gonna go ahead with the uh, K800. It's gonna leave a finer scratch than 800 and it's gonna cut better than an 800 or a P800 would. So let's go ahead and try that out. We could go ahead and take it off the uh, sander for areas that you need to get by hand that you don't trust with the sander. Just really cuts really well. Just a very soft and nice cut. Could even take it off. It's very pliable, the sandpaper. So it can kind of fit into different areas nicely. Almost like a scuff pad. I kind of like that. So you can kind of ball it up like a piece of paper and it will still, uh, hold itself together and cut well. I love that uniform scratch right there. This is what I love to see, a nice sanded panel ready for the blend. We're gonna bring it into the booth right now. All right, so you can see with that K-grit, it just leaves the panel so smooth that the base and the clear, they just follow very nicely. So on this application, we're gonna sand our primer. We have some UV primer right here. Uh, we got our block and then uh, I have the interface pad and then K600. Now remember that K600, uh, this is not the P grid. The K600 is equivalent to 320 and it will cut at that speed, right? But it will leave a 600 or finer grit scratch is what we need exactly for this primer right here. You can see pretty cuts pretty good. I mean, I'm still surprised. It's kind of weird to start with a 600, but we kind of have to understand it's not a 600. It's equivalent to a 320. And uh, if we get dusty or cloudy like this, we can go ahead and we can blow it off. It really depends on the primer that you're using. You know, sometimes it'll clog up faster uh, than others. I'm very impressed by the cutting power from such a fine grit. So we got that K800. Now this K800 is equivalent to the P600. That means the speed of the P600. How fast a P600 cuts, not the coarseness of it. So the good thing about it is we can use it all over the whole entire panel and we've only really had two steps, uh, K600 and K800 instead of P320, P400, P600, P800. It, it really helps out and I'm seeing the advantage right now in the two grits and uh, really surprised. So we're gonna go ahead and see how long uh, this one piece of paper can last. Scuff the edges with some uh, gray scuff pad. So it's all done and I gotta say, it doesn't look that bad. I gotta say it looks pretty good. Come now in this application, we can see that we have some chips that have turned into rust. 
with some small scratches in this area. For this, we're gonna use the K-Grit, and we have a hard pad to keep the surface nice and level. We're gonna start off with a K240, which is equivalent to a P150 cutting speed, okay? Now we can see right here that we have a small dent and some chips, so we're gonna to continue to level this and try to get it down to metal as best we can. To remove that little rust right there and the rest of the paint that's in that very shallow dent, we can switch back to our P80. The K grit starts at a higher grit, so it's not gonna have the 80 grit that comes along with it. Once you have all the rust removed and the paint out of the very, very shallow dent, then you're gonna take a K360, which is equivalent to a P240. So if you're in the P grit, you can use around a P220 or 240, and we're pretty much gonna go over the whole surface and feather it out and smooth it out before it gets its bondo. And once again, if that dent is very shallow like it is, then we can put our filler right over it. Now once that filler is dry, you can go ahead and into the peak grid if you want and kind of shape it up a little bit. Now once we have it shaped up, then we'll go back over to our K240. So we're right around a P150 now. Cutting speed of a P150. Now you do have the option of using that block with it if you want to make it easier. It's up to you. Now as it's starting to look good, we'll go ahead and now we'll switch to that K360, which is equivalent to around that P240 uh, cutting speed. And this will start to smooth it out for primer. Now, once you're sanding, if you're concerned that you got some filler over some sanded clear coat, it's not a huge deal because we got a K240 scratch right there, so it's enough for it to overlap and bite into it without any adhesion issues. Now, just to get it ready for some primer, I'll take off this hard block, and I'll go to my uh, K600 just to kind of get the primer something to stick to that overspray. And after primer, this one's ready to go. What I also like about the K grit, so it's got these hand pads, right? And we can attach the, uh, the sheets of K800. You're gonna have these, what I call, base coat boogers, all right? And that's little like nuggets. So pretty much this will just attach to this. And since it's soft, right? It will cut without digging in. And that's the big issue that we have. All right, so take a look. And I'm just letting the, the paper do the work. I'm not being aggressive. Make sure your base coat is dry. This looks like this was a booger in the uh, sealer because I can see some sealer starting to show through, which would indicate that it was there way before. All right, so that one's good. Got a little something right here. I'll just hit that up and that's good to go. So really effective, really easy, and you don't have to be scared about digging into it. Cool little uh, tool to have in your uh, arsenal. Now here's another time I reached for the hand pad and that K800. I got a little area here, just didn't sand the primer smooth enough, so I'm just gonna roll over it, just a touch, smooth it out. Run over it with the tack rag and spray my base right over it. Now in this application, we're gonna remove just light orange peel and a couple of specks of dirt. So we're gonna use our K2000 for this. Now if this doesn't cut, then we can always drop down to the P1500. As we can see here, it's already starting to cut that peel. We got a little piece of dirt right here. We'll just further add it a little bit more. So from this point, it's looking good. I can jump up to my 3000. Make sure you're using your Buff X pad. It's a little bit softer and it's gonna give it a nicer, softer cut. Now we're ready to buff.
and just like that it's buffed up and it's ready to go okay so with this application we're going to be using the buff flex from the k series now we're going to be using this interface pad now this is the k series um Kovat, uh answer to the uh trizac pretty much the paper itself uh gets replaced and this is that foam cushion that you got so then go ahead and put it on your pad like i said i'm using a 330 seconds uh stroke da it just leaves a finer grit scratch now this will be equivalent even though this is 2000 it'll be equivalent to a much higher step so we'll go 2000 3000 and buff the finish is really nice but this particular car is really flat more flatter than i've ever seen so we're going to just buzz down this area that i see has a little bit more texture than what i want Yeah, I got a little piece of trash right here where the sander can't get. So again, with that toll cut, uh, 1500 on here. And then I'll just nib it out. So that's at 2000 on the uh, Buff Flex, the K-Series. Now, the thing I like about it is you don't need to use any water with it. You can straight up just use it dry. That's the way it's designed. Now I'll go ahead and I'll move to the uh, 3000 grit. And same thing, dry once again, refine it just a hair. That's a beautiful finish that's ready to be buffed. It's almost shiny. I guess get a little compound on here. And here she is after she's been buffed. So that will conclude this application of using the Buff X. Next up, we'll be using the K-Grit to remove a small dust nib in a finished clear coated panel. We'll be using the Kovacs block. This little block is becoming one of my favorite little tools for wet sand and buffing. You can see it's super flat, it's dense and firm. It will only sand down the nib without burning through any other areas. When we pair it with the toll cut papers, it's a great combination. We'll start by using the K1500 grit. And remember, the K-Series is gonna leave a finer scratch than a regular P1500. Simply peel off a piece and stick it right onto your block. For this application, I'll use some water to assist in the wet sanding process. We'll focus our attention on flat passes, not at an angle. With just a few passes, we've already cut down that nib with 1500. Now we're gonna to change to a 2000 grit. Here with the 2000 grit, we'll just do the same thing. And finally, a 3000 grit. We'll take this a little bit further just to make sure we've covered all of our sanding scratches. Now we can use some compound and our mini buffer to buff it out. Use the light to make sure you removed all the scratches. Looks like I need a little bit more buffing in this area. Then go ahead and polish. Then you can go ahead and install all your trim pieces. That really made it easy to go ahead and buff. Now it is also important to note that that toll cut comes in many different varieties from rectangular to our square and sort of like an oval shape with the according type of paper to fit each and every one of those blocks. Okay, so we went ahead and we looked at a whole lot of applications from the P ranging to the K grit. I tried to cover the most common. Now one application I did not cover is peeling paint. And for the reason of, if you're having peeling paint, you want to remove that paint completely. Putting any type of paint over that paint is gonna eventually peel because the paint underneath is already starting to deteriorate. So for that, you can chemically strip it or you can jump into the P grit and go from P36 or P40, P80, whatever it might be, but make sure refining that metal up to at least P180 before you epoxy prime or urethane or whatever it might be, okay? So I went ahead and I included the links for the DK, the P-grade and Eagle Abrasives if you wanna take a look. Uh, they also have a, like a beginner set, um, pretty much samples of every single uh, paper. 
according to what you want to kind of get you started without having to buy everything. Now, of course, that P grit is universal to all brands. It's going to be similar, but the K grit is proprietary towards Eagle uh, for Eagle abrasives. All right. So I hope you guys learned something within this video. If you guys want to support the channel, I got new shirts along with other shirts down below. I have the link. You can go over there and purchase it yourself. So guys, this is Brian from Pain Society reminding you, don't overthink it. It's just pain. I'll see you guys on the next one.